Hey and welcome back. I don't really do New Year's resolutions or anything like that, but this year I want to commit to using more sheet metal in the workshop. I've mentioned it before, but it really is a great material if you can work it into your designs, especially once you have the tools to fold and shape it into, well, larger, more complex shapes. It really is the backbone of manufacturing these days, and I always find it really impressive when it shows up in stuff where you don't really expect it. Plus, when you compare it to, say, machining, billet or plate, it's going to be a lot cheaper to buy, a lot easier on the cutting tools, and a lot of the time, it's going to be a lot faster to machine. I know some of the bigger YouTubers have CNC plasma machines to cut it to size, but my go-to has always been to draw out the template, angle grind it to size with a grinder, and then finish it off with a file. You know, job done. Generally speaking though, I don't mill it. You know, fixturing can be a bit of a pain given how thin the sheet metal is. My go-to, if I have to do it, is to double side tape it down to a piece of form ply. That usually is enough to keep it in place, but every now and then it just doesn't work. And that's why most of the time I prefer to simply clamp it in the vise and then file in any details by hand. For one-off parts, it's generally okay, but when you're making the same thing multiple times, there are better ways of doing it. Namely, punching. You effectively get a punch, which is the shape that you want to press out, and you push that through the sheet metal. And on the bottom side, you usually have a die of some sort to support the material so it doesn't bend. And to do all that, you usually use a press of some sort, usually a hydraulic press. Now ultimately the shape that I'm aiming to press out is a 5 to 6 millimeter wide slot. I've made a lot of these over the years by simply filing them by hand, and the purpose of them is to allow for some adjustment in the final assembly. The thing is filing it by hand, especially using needle files, can take quite a bit of time, so it would be really good if I could speed up the time to make them. However, before I make any complicated punches, I'll quickly do a test piece just to make sure the press is up to the job. Plus in doing this, I can find anything that's a bit challenging and then hopefully fix it for the final design. So what I'll do is I'll take the bearing pressing tool out of the fly press and then I'll turn down a 10 millimeter shaft with a bit of clearance behind it. I'll also add a bit of rake at the bottom to make the cutting edge a little bit sharper. And yeah, that's about it. That's our basic punch done. Now obviously the part is unhardened. You know, it's just made from low carbon steel, so I couldn't harden it even if I wanted to. But I'm not expecting it to last all that long. Just long enough to do a bit of testing. I have a piece of steel with a matching size tool, and that's going to act as the die. I'll just get these two lined up and I'll go find some metal. We're going to start off with a piece of, I think this is 0.6mm aluminium stucco. And that took absolutely no force at all. I mean, that thing just punched right through it. And for being such a basic punch, that is a really clean hole. And there's the slug still in there. So what I might need to do is widen the bottom so it easily falls through. Let's try something a little bit more difficult. This is some one millimeter galvanized steel plate. Now this definitely took a little bit more force than it was before, but it's nothing that the press couldn't handle. And the results in that look pretty great too. Now this is probably gonna be a bit of a long shot. You know, I'm not gonna be surprised if this doesn't work, but what I have here is some five millimeter aluminum plate. It's not really a question of can the press do it? You know, I'm sure it can. It's more of can I apply enough leverage with the short handle? And that definitely took a lot more force than anything before, but eventually it did make its way through. I 
All right, well, so far, I am seriously impressed with what the press is doing. You know, it might not look like much, but it shows that even with a very basic punch, you can yield some really good results. With that said though, I am glad that I did a bit of testing because this setup definitely can be improved. For one, the die needs to be properly fixed down. At several points, I very slightly bumped it and you could see the ram block being pushed forward ever so slightly as it was being pushed down. I know on permanent setups, you'd use guide pins in a sort of jig so everything would be aligned, which makes a lot of sense for say, a production machine, but that would limit the size and the shape of the work that I could work with. So I am gonna to have to work around it and find a different solution. The second thing I need to do is harden the punch, which is pretty obvious. You know, I wasn't expecting this punch to last all that long, but only after a few punches, it looks just about finished. So what I'll do is I'll go find some tool steel and that should be much better suited for the job. Finally, I think I'll add a spring to the punch to help it push the metal off the die and prevent it from sticking. The other thing we can get from this test is roughly how much force I can get from the press with a relatively short handle on it. If you remember, I made the press last year and when I made it, I couldn't exactly determine just how much force I was getting from it. At the time, I guess it was about three or four tons, but now we should be able to roughly calculate it. And to do that, we can simply calculate how much force would be needed to punch out that piece of aluminium. Now we know the perimeter of the circle that we were punching out is roughly 30 millimeters, and the piece was about five millimeters thick. Multiply those two together and you get 150 millimeters, which is the total area of the material that's being sheared. Now, according to the data chart that I ripped off the internet, it should take about 220 newtons of force to shear one millimeter squared of that aluminium. So if we simply times the force required to shear it by the area, we get a result of about 33,000 newtons to push out that piece of aluminium, or roughly 3.3 tons, which for a press of this size, I think is quite impressive and pretty close to what I thought I'd be getting from it. And as I said before, this is nowhere near the press's capacity. I think with a longer handle, we can easily get over five tons. But since we now know that we can get about 3.3 tons, we can make a guess at how much force may be needed to push out a slot that's roughly 15 millimeters wide and five millimeters tall. And that is the shape that I'm looking to make a punch of. Now, once again, the perimeter of the part that we're looking to punch out is about 35 millimeters, and I wanna punch it through some one millimeter thick steel. So in total, the area that we're punching out is 35 millimeters squared. I couldn't find the exact shear strength for this alloy of material, but Google seems to think it's about 250 newtons to shear one millimeter squared. So I went ahead and plugged that into the equation. And in the end, we roughly get a figure of 875 kilos needed to push the punch through the steel. The press should be able to do that. So let's go ahead and make the punch. I'm gonna make the punch from a piece of O1 tool steel, which should be okay for general use. Although this is not the type of tool steel you'd normally use if you were doing production. I think you'd usually use D2 or something like that. And that's the blank cutout. But before I start to shape it, I am gonna start off on the holder and the die. The first thing I'll do is I'll turn down the shank that goes into the ram block. I had a bit of trouble getting the chips to break on this material, 
but we eventually got there and we got a very nice finish. Now when I was at the hardware store, I found out that they sell a wide range of springs and I found one that should be a good size for the job. I'm not exactly sure if it's going to be stiff enough, but I guess we'll find out. Now the plan is going to be to turn down the bottom to accept the spring. Alright, so the spring's going on there, but the fit is a little bit tight. I think one final spring pass should do it. And with that done, I'll get it in the milling machine and get a slot cut for the cutter. I'll also use the centre which I'd previously drilled to find the middle of the part. And that's going to be a very tight fit between the two, which is what I was going for. Next, I'll make the die from a piece of steel plate. This is just going to be mild steel, so I'm not going to harden it, but I'm not exactly sure if this part needs to be hardened. I'll drill holes at each end, and then I'll come in with an end mule and then open it up. I'll then come in with a set of needle files and then try to open up or taper out the bottom to help the slug fall through. And with that now done, I'm going to shape the punch so that it matches the profile of the die. And for such a simple profile like this, I don't think there's anything wrong with filing it down by hand until it fits. And whilst I'm doing that, I'll also try to reduce the shank and taper the back a bit to prevent it from grabbing the metal and becoming stuck. And even though it was all done by hand, I think the final fit was quite good. I mean, I did it, so yeah, it was fantastic. I'll then take it back to the milling machine and use a radius ball end mill to add some sharp geometry to the bottom of the cutter. I can now press the cutter into the tool holder and then get it all welded into place. The final thing left to do was to quench and then temper the tip of the cutter in order to harden it. Now even though this is O1 tool steel and it's designed to be quenched in oil, most of the time I simply quench it in water, mostly because you get very similar results from doing it either way, and quenching it in water ends up being a lot easier to set up and easier to clean up.
And that, I think, went quite well. Still a bit of sticking, but the spring definitely takes care of most of the work. And that is a really nice cut on the corners too. There is a small burr, but I think it appears to be quite normal for this type of punch. Let's try it in steel, which is the main thing that I made the punch for. It's a bit difficult to see, but there is a little bit of oil on the metal to help it cut. And once again, that is a very crisp cut. It's much nicer than the one that I could make by hand, and definitely a lot quicker. And you know, why not? Let's go ahead and try the five millimeter plate. Now, this definitely wasn't easy. You know, the press was holding up, but I definitely need a long handle. But in the end, after a lot of trying, it finally went through, punching all the way through the aluminium very cleanly. You know, that is really impressive stuff. That took just under four tons of force to do, and I couldn't be any happier with the fly press. And that is a really clean cut. Now, obviously, you probably wouldn't need to do this if you have a milling machine, but it just is nice to know that the press can do stuff like this if you needed to do it. In fact, in many ways, you can make the argument that doing this is going to be a lot better and a lot quicker than broaching. And that's about it. Well, I hope you guys don't mind these research experimental types of videos where I simply test out the capabilities of my tooling, but I think this was a very impressive showing from both the punch and the press. And the other cool thing is it didn't take all that much time to produce the punch. So I think for very basic features like slots and maybe squares, I am going to have to make up a few more punches so I can make a variety of shapes. So I think when it comes to doing some of the sheet metal projects that I have planned for this year, this is going to be a super useful tool. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something new. See you next week.